In this episode with me, James Perry, we'll be talking about a number of things. Number one will be the benefit of having a coach and mentor in your life. Number two, how did I start my entrepreneurial journey? And number three, if you have an idea, how to take action and go for it. So welcome to Profit3 TV, and today we're joined by James Perry, who's the accounting exam coach. So James, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks for having me here. Having a chat with us today, so uh, excited to continue our chats. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> uh, so tell anyone, the, the five or six people that watch this who don't know who you are, uh, yeah. uh, a little bit about your background and, and what you do. Oh, okay, in the background, so I'm a chartered accountant um, by profession, and accountancy was always in the blood um, early on. So I've done A-level accountancy, degree in accountancy, master's in accountancy, and then done, I became a chartered accountant to qualify in 2006 with uh, Grant Thornton, so they're one of the bigger firms. Qualified with them, I then went into industry, um, but I was about 10 years in accountancy practice, went into industry for two years, was with the government for four, and now I'm on a career break to develop my own business. Um, but I suppose where I am with it, Kieran, is that I'm moving out of pure accountancy and talking about more coaching and along along the lines of coaching people through their accountancy exams. So I see there's a niche in the market for that and there's definitely a need for someone there to help to prompt the mentor through the process because becoming a qualified accountant is, is tough. It's a tough game. I, I, no, and, uh, for sure, and all the year study as well. And, and it's a very interesting you found a niche, yeah, an opportunity that... Yeah that wasn't being met online? Yeah, well, what a couple of people have said was they've coined me as the first accounting exam coach on the planet. They've never came across the concept, and I made the concept up. Um, there's plenty of lectures and plenty of tutors out there, and I myself was a lecturer at my own lecturing company uh, as well, teaching accountancy, but I've seen the gap in the market, Kieran, in terms of mindset, in terms of motivation, in terms of study techniques and exam techniques. And actually holding people accountable. So the big thing that people get from me is the fact that I will hold them to task. If you have to have a past paper done and get it to me by today, I'll expect it today. So it's, it's that accountability uh, and that coaching and prompting that is slightly different. That's the that's the, sort of the main service I'm providing at the moment. Very interesting because you, you prompted a, a question there. that So uh, we talk a lot about coaching and mentoring. Mm -hmm. And there's obviously uh, a little difference between them then. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, but you're you're specifically a coach. Then, it's coach is someone that encourages people. Certainly, um, and it's short term projects. So the coach will come in. Myself will come in probably for a twelve week period, ten to twelve week period, get you through that exam. Um, but I would mentor, I suppose, on longer term projects with some other people. If they, we've got two or three exams back to back, I will get them through that. If then they qualify as an accountant, I also do career coaching off the back of that so that could be mm -hmm. you know I've got I've, I'm a long-term mentor to two or three people now mm -hmm. and they see me as someone that they can lift their phone to at any stage for any advice in the profession so I do I do both Incredible. coaching and, and mentoring excellent and even in coaching as a discipline is there different types of coaching or different ways of delivering it maybe certainly there's different per well maybe my personality in the way that I will just tell you the truth <laughs> you know Which what I mean some people might not like <laughs> And that's fine. Yeah. You know, people get their own nation. People will get, as it's called, they get their own tribe around them. But if you're talking about accountancy exams, which are tough, my philosophy is you can't be all sweetness and light around it. You need to help people with some harsh, harsh truths. And I've, a lot of people really like that about me and go, okay, you know, need to do that. But some people have their own styles. It depends on what, what it is. You know, if you're talking about emotional stuff, you do have to put their arm around people. But if someone, for example, hasn't got the motivation to get a credible qualification to, to enhance their lives, then I'd crack down. Mm. You know what I mean? Because I'm all about the end game. All about the, the fantastic life that this hugely credible qualification can give you. I'm not necessarily an accountant that wants to be an accountant anymore, but I've always used the qualification as a springboard to go and do other things. Of course. And mm. uh, as, a, as a profession, accountancy is incredible. Like it's... it's I'm actually doing a, a, a theme this week on my social media about five reasons why I become an accountant. Um, Monday's theme was you can work abroad. Yesterday's theme was you can be an entrepreneur. And, you know, today's theme I have to, have to think before I post it online. 
But you know, there'll be certainly along the lines of, you know, you can go into any walk of business. Isn't the good old saying you always want, there's always two things in this world. You know what I mean? You'll die and you'll pay tax. <laughs> so you <laughs> always need an accountant yeah, there yeah, along yeah. the lines. So certainly it's a very good qualification, without a doubt. Incredible. And, and you see a, a huge advantages of someone investing in a coach or even without a Without a doubt. Because um, a lot of people probably still haven't taken that step. And don't see that they maybe need to invest in someone. Well, I've got my own mentor as well, um, very good friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I will be in contact with him every week to bounce ideas off him, and he holds me to uh, to account as well. So if I've said that I need to get something done by this time next week, he will contact me and go, right, have you delivered? Mm -hmm. And ha if you haven't delivered, why not? And there's any underlying issues behind that? Let's let's talk through it. So. Yeah, I'm a coach stroke mentor who has a coach stroke mentor. Yes, sir. So I think it's definitely, you know, there's certain things, Kieran, you can talk to your mates about, but there's certain stuff you won't. And you maybe need someone with a completely different perspective to bounce ideas off. So that's why I completely advocate coach or mentor. Incredible. So someone probably from a professional background, I can understand, as you say, your, your friends, you talk about day to day, but sometimes you need maybe some cold, hard yeah. advice from an independent person. I'm quite lucky, and my coach is probably, or mentor is the most rounded person I've ever met, both in terms of spiritually, intellectually, business, relationships, whatever that may be. He, he knows a bit of nearly everything. And I remember going to him, Kieran, and he went, Well, James, what do you want coached on? And I went, I want to be a better man in 12 months. That was my objective. In every aspect, and we're working on different aspects, work, working on different things to reach that objective. Crow. Um, yeah, so very much all round coaching. Brilliant. But it's very good. And if someone, again, sitting watching this, thinking, okay, I'm not overly happy where I am, I think I've got more I can do and deliver, I can be more productive or achieve more yeah. um, in the next year, 12 months, 6 months. Um, but they don't, again, they're being exposed to the coaching concept today, they're just wondering. What, what is coaching, what, what's involved, what happens, what's the process. You wouldn't um, give us a rough, maybe it's different for every person. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example of my um, accountancy sort of exam coaching. Mm -hmm. The first aspect, the personal inquire, they'll ring me for, for a complimentary 10, 15 minute conversation where I will then get under the skin of going, right, okay, what do you need me for? Because some people will need me for different things. With the, that'll be that they're not productive or that they're not motivated, mm. or the fact that they have got a mental block about exams, and they've got a fear about exams, maybe they've got the wrong exam technique. So there's different aspects of that. So the first step for me, probably for any coach, is to have that initial conversation. Then the next number of steps, especially session one with me, will be about mindset and motivation. So why do you want to do this? Example, accountancy, accountancy is a really, really tough road. So why do you want to become an accountant? It's the very first question I ask. I asked that question of a client last night. And sometimes, most people think it's money. It's not. Well, 90% of it isn't money. Then um, the guy last night, it was for him. It was for an achievement for him to prove some people in his life wrong. But very, very personal. So getting, the first step for me certainly is to understand why you need the service and then why do you want to get where you want to get to. Usually important because people don't necessarily see that. They can't see the wood for the trees. So bouncing that idea off someone to try and get to the root cause. Especially, Cain, whenever, and I notice this personally, whenever things go wrong, whether they'll be in your business life, whether they'll be in your personal life, whether they'll be at doing accounting exams, you know, what's that main driver that's going to get you through all that? All through the hard times. And I had a couple of main, main drivers that got me through a lot. So that's the value of a coach in my opinion, is to, is to get to those root causes and help someone along. Incredible. So very good. So very clear now. So hopefully there'll be a few calls. <laughs> so. Get on the phone. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so you're obviously an entrepreneur, a very entrepreneurial person. You've accountant, accountancy through very tough exams, yeah. uh, worked in some incredible places as well. Yeah, yeah. And um, now you've you set up your own business and you have a few few ventures running, your, your podcast, you, you're involved yeah, in networking, yeah. coaching. Um, so how, what, what drives people to be an entrepreneur? What's <sighs> driving you? Believe it or not, four or five years ago, I was not an entrepreneur. 
never had one entrepreneurial bone in my body, so I thought. I purely thought, my identity very early on, Kieran, was I was an academic. Give me an exam and I'll pass it and I'll do damn well. For example, went to Queen's to do the accountancy degree and I had to get a first class account, uh, accountancy degree. And I did. Um, one of four out of a class of 200. So I identified myself very much with being an academic. Then, 10 years ago, I was on the fast track to being a partner in Grant Thornton. Um, I was made senior manager very, very early on. But I learned very early on within that that wasn't for me. Went into the industry, done the same thing. I went, okay, James, you're this accountant. That was my, my identity as such, I'm an accountant. Then a couple of life-changing events happened about four or five years ago. And I basically, Kieran, it it's like the, the layers of an onion. I started unpeeling and unwrapping myself to go, what the hell am I actually all about? And then the idea of entrepreneurship cropped up. It's funny how things work. I'm very much a believer in mindset and the subconscious mind, and it's ticking away in the background. And I helped a girl pass an exam about five years ago. Mm -hmm. Two and a half years ago, I woke up in the middle of the night and went, I've done that. I can turn that into a business. So entrepreneurship to me cropped up out of nowhere. And that then has through, so from an accounting exam coach, from two and a half years being it, making it, or it was a hobby initially, and I've coached now over 90 people around the world, from Jamaica to Cyprus to Bulgaria to New Zealand, um, South Africa, Zimbabwe, and people know me. Um, and that lit a fire in me, and that's transformed into other things. So I, as you say, I run networking events locally. Mm -hmm. I do monthly online networking events mm -hmm. under my James Perry Presents brand. Um, I have a James Perry Presents YouTube and podcast channels. An accounting exam coaches launched his podcast two days ago. Incredible. So all this has just cropped up out of waking up one one night uh, and that idea, but it's then just taken that and running with the the momentum of it. Mm -hmm. And the advice that I would give anyone out there is, if you have an idea, treat it as a hobby first of all. If it becomes viable, if you can spend three, four, five hours a week on that idea and transform that hobby and progress that hobby, goodness knows what comes out of it. And I, I would talk, I will do a lot of public speaking in schools and that's the main message. If you have an idea, run with it as a hobby, ask for help, ask for advice, and goodness knows where it'll take you. Excellent, so de-risk by running as a hobby, i.e. in your spare time, then okay. if it works out and something becomes it, then you invest in it and go for it. We're, we're in the entrepreneurial economy now, you know, gone are the industrial revolution days where you have to have a massive yeah. part of capital to set up a business you can set up your business through your phone you can do that yeah. whatever that idea may be the power of social media and that sort of thing yeah. definitely it's it's a lot less risky and there's a, there's obviously there's lots of different ways of getting funding now for things mm -hmm. so i just go for it it's the good old what if factor don't want to be lying on my deathbed going what if it you know what yeah. if it just done that so that's my advice to people just yeah. And go for it and we've all plenty uh, no matter what age you are you've all plenty of what ifs no, uh, no, no matter what so it's trying to reduce those and keep them the small ones and not add to the what if pile that we but have you know we, we've been talking just before about travel uh -huh. you know my life's ambition was to go and do a full tour of egypt which i'd done three weeks ago and it was that what if you know what i mean to go and see and stand in front of abu symbol and that would achieve my life's ambition three weeks ago it's funny that the concept, my concept of success has changed completely. Mm -hmm. So 10 years ago, I was incredibly money orientated and I had seen success in terms of pound notes. Now I see my success in terms of achievements. And I'm definitely driven by doing things that not too many people on this planet do. Mm -hmm. So that's my, don't get me wrong, money and, and the freedom to go and do these things is very important, yeah. but it's not my be all and end all anymore. So yeah, success to me means very different to what it was 10 years ago. Incredible. And and you're building a personal brand yeah. uh, very successfully online at the moment. You, yeah. you see that personal brands, I, I'd have a policy or a thought, and I'm sure loads of people share, um, that personal brands are, like everyone's a personal brand, no matter who you are. If you want it or not, you have one because you're going to have a LinkedIn profile, a Facebook, a Twitter, whatever else you have. Um, so you actually have a personal brand and how you position yourself with other people online, offline, that is your brand. 
but there's a, another step to that then which you've taken yeah, and yeah. enhancing that and actually leveraging that to meet new people find new opportunities and build a business so do you think personal brands are important what, what's your thoughts well, on all of this funny personal brand is the modern word for what i believe is your reputation i think it's reputation so you know things like people talk about being authentic and this is all the buzzword i'm going you actually mean be yourself so i strip it right back and what i see about reputation kieran is my dad i'll never forget it i remember telling me if it was like second or third year in school and he sat me down at home and he says son your reputation means everything and that was what was that I was 25 26 27 years ago so uh, to me i still boil it down to that very lesson of enhancing your reputation but what i done was kieran 10 years ago networking to me was a very very different concept so i was in the corporate world networking to me was going to meeting people that i didn't particularly have it very much in common with mm -hmm. with a pocket full of business cards and going and making small talk about stuff i didn't want to talk about yeah. now to me networking is a very different concept where for example if i'm running my networking events so you'll have 40 or 50 like-minded people who want to go and better themselves yeah which to me is a pleasure in doing that. The online events, I'm getting people now from around the world on the James Perry Presents sort of Facebook Lives and YouTube channel mm -hmm. and to share ideas that people can take and run with themselves. So the whole personal brand or reputation building that I'm doing, but again, it came out of nothing. Accounting exam coach, 12 months ago, I made a very conscious push to move it online, sort of to move it forward and get a good content plan out there. I'd done it and then I remember one day I was in the Europa and 10 separate people recognised me that I'd never met before. I went, you're that guy off the internet, aren't you? And that made me go, right, okay, people are recognising me for the value I'm putting out there. Let's take this another step forward. Hence the podcast, hence the YouTube channels. So using those different mediums to grow my reputation. Yeah. That's what's happened with that. I came out of the blue really about a year ago, but taking the bull by the horns on that. Incredible. And would you advise other people, business owners, entrepreneurs, to, to uh, people who are in the job to Completely. follow step? Yeah. Completely. If you're in a business or not, or have a business or not, or not as you quite rightly have said, everyone's going to have a LinkedIn profile. Everyone's going to have a Facebook page. And the way the world is, people are going to judge you by these things. So, you know, I've actually tried to be slightly different with my personal Facebook page now. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd put up the odd thing about holiday, but I try and tie it in with business or try and tie it in with what I'm thinking that particular day. Mm -hmm. I would try and make every Facebook post that I put on my personal page of value to someone. And therefore, I'm trying to be slightly more clever with business Facebook and personal Facebook and make them interact. And then the same with LinkedIn as well. Yes, so I don't see it as an online CV. I see LinkedIn as the promotion of you. And that's it. Mine, mine oh, completely. Situation. So many people see LinkedIn as an online CV, and I did up to five years ago, and then I switched it, and then people see, see the sort of stuff I'm trying to do. Incredible. But I would ask everybody to do that. Yeah, without a doubt. Excellent. And if someone's watching this again, or even someone that you're coaching, uh, one of those on the fence, mm -hmm. not not ready to take that first step. Is there anything that you would say or advise to push them over the edge and make them <laughs> press that? go live button go and do it because from what i've learned is this yes i'm going to up my game now in terms of the interviews i'm doing and the look of it but i remember my first my first couple of videos i done live kieran and they were shocking sorry they weren't shocking they were great but looking back from where i am now they were shocking but where i was just doing what i was doing and you don't have to be the most polished person in the world you don't have to have the most polished script People don't really care about that. People care about who you are or who I am. And they'll go, okay, this fella's talking sense. I don't care if he's got a million pound camera taking the, you know, it's the message you listen to. So some, if someone's watching this now and going, I would love to do it, go and do it. Because you don't like the video, you can go and delete it. You know what I mean? Just, you can do it in your phone. Just go and take the chance. Go and write that first blog. Go and if you have an idea, go and try it. If you have an idea, turn it into a hobby. Give it a go. Because going back to this what if factor. 20 years time, you know something? I should have wrote that blog on, the, on that great holiday I had. 
or I should have done that video and recorded my whatever that may be my daughter's graduation and done a nice video on it whatever that may be go and have a go because in my opinion I'm very much about no regrets in, in life people are full of them just, just go and do it. That's my, my advice. Yeah. Just do it, as, yeah. as they say. Yeah, no, totally. And then the second second part is probably, so the hard part is starting, taking the first step. And then the second hardest part is actually staying consistent. Oh, completely. And continue to do it. Completely. Not, not to fall off the wagon. And what happened with me, Kieran, funny enough, I had a bit of a wobble in the middle of this, of 2018. And it was this, and a good friend of mine rung me up and called me out on it. And... He says, James, who are you? Are you this networker? Are you this business coach? Are you this accountant? Are you this guru of everything? He says, I don't really think you know what you're doing anymore. And that was quite right. And I was trying to be everything to everybody. Whereas I boiled it by right back down to having James accountant here, accounting exam coach here, and then James the networker and public speaker here to be very, very distinct. Why? Because I went on, I think I sold myself to the social media devil. I was chasing likes. I was chasing comments. I was chasing followers. Whereas what I was miss, actually missing out on was my main message. I was getting lost in the middle of it. So I've learned that very, very much so. Mm. So the seconds, and I wasn't being consistent then. Why? Because I was just posting anything at any time. Where my success beforehand, Kieran, was everybody knew that half eight, five days a week, accounting exam coach was going to post a bit of value on LinkedIn and I lost my way with that so that's the, the second bit of advice if you've got a message to do it be consistent with it but maybe try different mediums video blog podcast picture quote whatever that may be but certainly be consistent and learn from others if they need advice from yourselves you know lift the phone and learn from others mm -hmm. like a good old boss said to me the first day whenever I joined Grant Thornton is an accounting trainee. There's no such thing as a stupid question. No, definitely. One of the greatest bits of advice I've ever been given. Definitely not, because you don't ask the question, you never learn. You never learn. That's it. And you've started the podcast journey, then how are you finding that? Podcast journey, uh, what I'd done was, and this maybe it's another tip, I tried to be smart then with the James Perry concept. So i done my interviews on Facebook Live mm -hmm. um, with a few real good people of LinkedIn, especially around the world. And I downloaded them and put them onto a YouTube channel. And then I took them videos and converted them to MP3 and then put them onto the podcast. So just using the same bit of content in numerous different mediums. Very good. So that was for the James Perry Presents angle. So that's the networking and the personal development and the business development front. The Accounting Exam Coach I launched two days ago. And that is using a few previous interviews I've done with accountants. But it is the tips and the common sense that I've got in my mind that I can now, it's not going to be 20 or 30 minute interview, it's going to be five minute sound bites. Yeah. So it literally is going to be like the Counting Exam Coach podcast, the five minute mentor mm -hmm. type of thing. Good. Five minute sound bite on time management, on my top 10 tips, on you've got a taxation paper, here's the top things to look out for. Five minutes, boom, done. So that was two nights ago as well. So. And, you know, I've been hearing from different people, podcasting is definitely the way forward in many things, because it's quite easy, to, obviously, to listen to a podcast. Yes, very true. So uh, it's amazing that you're, uh, you, you've got a very good process for content, so you're reusing it, and we advocate that so much. Okay. It's taking, you know, get your content to work for you, so it's brilliant, get as much out of it as you can, and you're actually doing that, so you're taking from Facebook into YouTube and into uh, the audio then into podcasts, brilliant. It's and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the hugely, you know, tech isn't necessarily my thing. I, I like talking to people. But use tech to your advantage. That's the other thing. Um, I think it was Gary Vaynerchuk. I think I seen a post on him two or three days ago going, it was along the lines of whenever email first came out, he went, that was the biggest land grab that he ever had because he pushed his father's wine business through email. And he said, no, he said, LinkedIn and other social media platforms and podcasting, etc., is the biggest land grab you can do now. So why don't you go out there and promote yourself on these mediums? He's definitely right. Mm. Um, you know, and with stuff that, that you guys are doing with content and content creation, it's, 
the world's your oyster because you can reach so many people so many so quickly now. and you never know and exactly what you you're saying it's it's um, put the content out and see what happens mm. and if you're not actually publishing content you're not telling your story and not showing your skills and uh, expertise and no one's going to know no no well i've I suppose I've quite a unique story in my thing, in my life, and the way, the journey I've had to get to where I've got to. So even from a personal perspective, the story is quite unique. Um, and I'll be perfectly honest, I went through a hell of a lot of adversity in my life. So to get to where I've got to, that's the reason why I probably always see my my glasses half full. Okay. I probably inherit that inherit that trait from my from my father. He's one of the most positive people I've ever met, and. It is that if you have a story and if you can help someone with that story, just go out and tell it. Because, you know, people trust from people. If you have a business, use your personality to promote that business because people don't buy from machines. You buy from Kieran or you buy from James or whoever that may be. So certainly get that story out there. Um, it's all about, I'm very much about, if you can help as many people as possible by saying something, why not go and do it? Yes, excellent. You, you clearly have a lot of advice and I'm really mm. enjoying listening uh, to everything. I'd be checking out your show. I've seen it a few times actually, but I think you might have another... Uh, uh, have another look at it. Another, another lurker. <laughs> oh, <I love> that. <laughs> sitting yeah. watching, but uh, you've, a, you've a lot of uh, advice. And I have to say, like, uh, really, really engaged with everything you're saying. It, it really is resonating with me and uh, reinforcing what we like, would think as well. Like someone says to me here one time, he says, James, you've lived, in, lived enough for three lifetimes yeah. already at the age of 39, and yeah. I probably have. Yeah. So I can have enough, have enough to tell people. That's incredible. Brilliant. So uh, if anyone wants to reach out and one, have help with uh, exams or coaching, mm -hmm. uh, where, where's best for them to go? And also, your shows, where can they find them? So they want to just consume content and yep. be enlightened? Yep, yep. Well, the most, the, the primary place is probably LinkedIn. So it's James Perry. Uh, if there's loads of James Perry's, you'll probably see underneath it, it'll be James Perry Presents and Accounting Exam Coach. Um, that's the first one. If you're an accountancy student or related discipline and you want a bit of help or a chat, even with your career or exams, accountingexamcoach.com is going to be live probably in the next four to six weeks. So revamped the whole the whole website. And Facebook, so personal Facebook, James Perry. And I have another Facebook business page for um, the accountancy stuff too. Okay. But primarily LinkedIn is the main thing. Send me a, a message in LinkedIn, no, no problem to, to chat. Excellent, and we'll have all live links to all of them on right. this video, so make sure you click below, excellent. Well, thank you again for coming in today. It's amazing to, to chat to you and, and to hear what you're at. And really looking forward to following your journey indeed. and seeing you as, as you spread your uh, message across the web. Yeah, indeed. It'd be very good. And thank you very much for joining us today. Very uh, informative and interesting concept and, and uh, strategies and advice today. So please do check out the links for, for James below. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. This is Kieran from Profile 3, broadcasting from the Innovation Factory here on Springfield Road in Belfast. Uh, see you in tomorrow's video. Thank you.